Hi, welcome to Creative Corner with Panilla. This is my second episode and I was really hoping that I had uh, recorded this much earlier. Um, I had a giveaway in the first episode and that giveaway ended the 21st of September and I was really really hoping that just like the day after or two, three days after I would have been able to record a new episode. But instead life happened and we had to go to the hospital with our oldest kid because he got um, Borrelia and got half of his face paralyzed due to that. Uh, he was well, otherwise uh, the tough part was that he had to take some, had to take some tests like blood tests and also like, oh, now I have to try to figure out what this is called in English, but they t take a test from uh, the spine, uh, liquid from the spine to say, uh, you probably maybe understand what I mean. Uh, and taking that test uh, made him have some back pain and headache for almost a week, so he couldn't go to school. Um, but he got some medication and now um, I think it's yeah, today it's 14 days since uh, we t took those testers and now we can see like this paralyz paralyzation on his left side of the face have started to let go. So he can lift his eyebrow, for example, a bit. Uh, it moves just a little when he's wrinkling his nose and he can open his mouth on the left side a bit more. So yeah, uh, <laughs> it was some uh, draining days um, ex especially after he took the test test because that's when he got uh, like started to be sick uh, like uh, due to the test test he was like doing totally fine uh, when his face got paralyzed he, he didn't even notice I asked him can you feel that you can't move the left side of your face and he was like no uh, but yeah, hopefully it will let go uh, totally <laughs> the paralyzation from his face. So yeah, that's the reason this has been dragged out. And I don't think anyone would blame me for uh, dragging this out. But it was just me hoping to be able to give the sock pattern that was the giveaway prize and the dyed yarn. So you had it on the 1st of October when Socktober started but yeah I, I think you will the person that will get the yarn and the pattern will enjoy it uh, just as fine uh, getting it probably in the weather or something like that because I have so much to do in school so I don't know I don't I don't I won't be able to dye yarn until we have uh, like fall break autumn break um, that week I'm gonna work all week with my business meaning I'm gonna tie so much yarn because I'm gonna be on two um, like Christmas markets and selling my yarns and my project bags and um, regular bags and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> probably won't be able to record another uh, podcast episode for a while, but today I managed to have the time because I'm done with my uh, with the big project we have in school now. We have this, had this project for like three weeks and I finished it today. So I actually went home earlier from school so I was able to work because I'm gonna be on a, a knitting event this Saturday and I'm gonna have two courses, one with uh, uh, color knitting um, and one with uh, col uh, color work knitting uh, and one with uh, like how to design your own garments when knitting um, so I have to prepare some for that and also I'm gonna sell my yarn at this event so I have also to prepare what I should bring to the event and like check my uh, yeah check what I have uh, to bring yeah uh, and the event this Saturday is uh, Stick Spore, a Swedish podcast. Um, two women that have this podcast have arranged this event uh, several times. And I have been 
holding courses at this event. I think this is the uh, I think this is the third time, and uh, yeah, it's a really nice event. Uh, it's funny to meet uh, so many knitters, and yeah, but I have a lot to prepare. So I, I'm gonna try to make this a short video and actually um, since I've been talking, oh no, I'm gonna do is, yeah. I'm gonna show you the stuff I have made that's not my designs and then I'm gonna show you the stuff I have made that's my designs. And also I'm gonna show you some uh, fabric I bought. Uh, I was on an event in Soleftio. And yeah, I will tell about that later. I'm gonna start to show stuff. So I have been test knitting for Stitch and Soda is her Instagram name and now totally blank what her real name is. So yes, sorry, I'm gonna shake out. But Stitch and Soda is her name in um, on Instagram. And I guess that's her name on Stitch. Stitch and Soda, and of course she does not have her real name in here. Oh, well, yeah, never mind then, I will probably remember her name later on. But she had made a, a sock design for October, uh, uh, October. Uh, that's some of the money from the selling of this pattern will go to um, breast cancer funds um, and I have test knitted the socks so I'm gonna show you this is her oh I'm gonna turn the light a bit so you can see check your boobs sock and up here at the edge we have these small like blobs of oh I don't know but um, they are representing nipples and uh, yeah so these I have test knitted and I test knitted them in my own uh, alpaca sock yarn base and they are actually not 100% done yet because I have to sew in the edges and I'm gonna do that today because I finished them today uh, at school while we have our morning meeting Oh, maybe you didn't hear me because the microphone was here. I hope you heard what I said about the socks. But uh, this is Stitch and Soda's Shake Your Boob sock design. And uh, some amount of the selling from this pattern will go to um, breast cancer funds. I like them. I like them. My sister actually saw them uh, when I was at my mom and she visited and she wanted them but they are a size bigger than mine hello sorry my size is quite oh now i'm really messed this up what did i say uh, as i was meant to say my size is a lot bigger than hers so this was too big for her to have but maybe if i just rip up the toe and make them shorter she might can be able to have them uh, I have so many socks already, but it's fun to knit socks. I always try to have a pair of socks uh, going on. And then my next, my next finish, finished project is a cardigan. And oh, this was. Yeah, I should have talked about this because I want to show you. When I have it on so I have to take this one off but yeah it's a black cardigan I have show I think I showed it on the first episode I have been knitting on this for a while uh, it's knitted with um, Clara by Paramin it's a mix of 55% wool and 45% cotton and I actually thought this was gonna be a bit heavy but it's not so heavy that I imagine it and yeah I'm just gonna change and show you when I wear it. So just a simple um, basic cardigan. No, I've got remember to move the mic with me. 
so you hear what I say. So no buttons because I don't need to like close it. So I like to have it as an open cardigan and it's uh, with raglan arms. And the only part I took from another pattern was like a free pattern I found on Ravelry. And I just did the cast on and the dividing for where the raglans was supposed to be. And then when I kept reading the pattern, I was like, no way, no, this makes no sense to me. So then I like skipped the pattern and then just knitted it uh, just as I wanted it. And I really, really like this. Uh, this I don't have any cardigan that I have knitted myself in my wardrobe. And yeah, this quickly become uh, a favorite garment. And I really, really, really want to knit more um, of this cardigan. So I'm actually thinking about making a design uh, for an open cardigan. But I have promised myself that I'm going to take a bit uh, slow with the pattern making because I'm going at school and I want to focus on the painting for this year I'm at school. But also I, of course, I'm knitting like when we have meetings or stuff like that. Um, so I have time to knit, but I'm not, I'm not going to force uh, the creation of some new knitting patterns. But this is going to be in the queue for patterns to make. So yeah, just an easy, simple, open cardigan. And I really, really want one in brown colors. So these are the two finished objects that, yeah, okay, the cardigan is going to be my own design, but yeah, isn't at the moment. And now it's going to be some like, I don't know if I'm going to say commercial for my own company as a pattern designer or if you say sponsored content, but uh, the garments I'm going to show now is with my own design and you can find all of these designs, expect the, the sweater I'm wearing, uh, on Ravelry. This is going to be on Ravelry, hopefully in December. And uh, oh, these I'm going to show you last because then I also can announce the giveaway winner. But I'm going to start with this a little hat that I have knitted to, to, knitted to our youngest son because uh, his big brother have one in this dark green and a brown color and um, yeah our youngest also wanted one um, so I told him I'm gonna need one and I'm used up all of the green yarn and uh, yeah the leftover from this dark green so this hat is knitted in Filcolana's Peruvian that it's a 100% Peruvian highland wool and I really really like this yarn and um, I'm, I'm thinking about buying some. This is the hard part being a yarn dyer and a knitwear designer because I mostly knit in my own yarn. It, but like this cardigan uh, I bought, bought some yarn to I think just in the start of my dyeing uh, career uh, so this I had at home already otherwise I would have knitted this cardigan in my own yarn but I don't want to <laughs> dye so much black in I really wanted a cardigan like totally black and it, it won't be that like solid black if I dye it um, and for this cardigan I wanted a solid black but yeah uh, mostly I knit with my own yarns but I really really like this Filcolana Peruvian um, and if I can come up with a project that uh, a garment that I really want in this yarn I'm probably gonna buy some of it because yeah, I, I really like it and uh, yeah I finished this last night like sewing the edge and uh, yeah he didn't go to bring it to preschool today or preschool kindergarten today because I wanted to show it but tomorrow he's gonna have it to kindergarten 
Uh, and today it wasn't so cold outside. But now we had have a hat and uh, <laughs> don't need to fight over uh, our oldest hat. And yeah, I, this pattern uh, is <laughs> I have um, um, knitted for from my um, three times folded uh, hat pattern. And at the moment I only have this pattern as an instruction video instruction video in Swedish but I'm um, uh, in the making of starting not making it in English not at the moment at least but I'm gonna try to make some of my videos in English as well but I'm gonna do a written pattern of uh, this design so it's just basically a hat with a really really long uh, ribbing that you fold three times <laughs> so three times folded a hat. So this is my design and all um, everything that I have links to like for example where you can find this uh, check your boobs pattern for example I'm gonna put down in the description so you can easily find them and if I have forgotten something you can just like leave a comment and I will make sure I put up what you feel feels missing uh, and then uh, we can talk about my uh, sweater I'm wearing. I showed you last time, this is Susie's sweater. Uh, I knitted this design for my husband's sister that turned 40. And then I wanted to knit one to myself and here's the Finnish uh, sweater. And I'm actually having this out for test, test knitters at the moment. So I'm really hoping that I will have the finished pattern uh, in December, so I can release it then. And uh, oh, I have been working so hard now with um, making some adjustment in the patterns and it's going to be so good. And I'm, I'm really appreciating when people want to test it because I wouldn't make like any pattern if I was to test knit all the sizes myself um, that would take so much time so I'm so grateful for all the test knitters and sometimes you get like oh no they found something wrong and I'm like okay I have to fix this uh, and then you fix it and then you feel like oh it got so much better uh, so I like really really appreciate when people are test knitting um, and they have it is so far so hopefully I'm gonna be done with the pattern in a, a good time before the deadline that I have set it out for uh, releasing the pattern so yeah this is Susie's sweater and I have knitted this in my own hand dye yarn um, Alpino silk and yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm really Okay, it's started to get a bit cold, but not cold enough for me to wear this inside all day. Um, if I was outside, it would be perfect, but when I'm inside, it still gets a bit too hot wearing this. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit sweaty right now uh, with this on, but I'm really pleased with it. And I think it's got a perfect fit. I don't want it to be uh, too big. I like them a bit tighter, like, like this one. Uh, so yeah, that's an upcoming pattern and uh, yeah, I think I did not show these the last time because I had um, a autumn box that uh, you could bought, buy uh, or if you... Oh no! Okay, I thought this had ripped but it was just a um, stitch that had got stuck in something and been pulled out to be too big. But for my autumn box and I only ship within Sweden, so I'm sorry for you that watching this that do not live in Sweden. But uh, at least I had an autumn box, and in that autumn box I had a pattern that was released at the same time uh, as the autumn box. So the yarn and the pattern was like uh, planned to fit together in this box. So here you have the pattern. Uh, here's the big one because I made a uh, big and a small size. So this is. Emma scarf and the name uh, it got because one of my friends Emma helped me um, like uh, 
starting ideas with me how to do stuff because when you do a pattern like this that's gonna be secret you can't like ask for advice from like followers or stuff like that because yeah you want it to be a surprise so my friend Emma helped me and therefore the name Emma Scarf uh, she's she's almost my neighbor we live in the same like small town or village or yeah uh, move the mic over here as well but yeah this is the big one so you can wrap it two times uh, around your neck and then I have this one I knitted on when I was on a um, exchange uh, trip to Romania but this one I made it too small so I can't even wrap it one time but I'm got the um, like the basic of the pattern while doing this and I think it might fit some one one of our kids and then I have another one and these are like my favorite colors as you can see always when I make patterns uh, I often ended up with this color combination with the brown and like this uh, blue greenish color and then also one with a bit lighter blue color. So yeah, Emma Scarf, and I have knitted these in my own yarn, uh, uh, Sereno. Um, the Sereno is 50% um, 50 50 Suri alpaca. It's one of the more rarer species, I don't know. I will, I think I remember that. 25% uh, of the alpacas yarn are from Sereno alpaca or something like that. Um, yeah, but then, then it's also called Suri, Sereno alpaca. So it's 50% Sereno alpaca and 50% uh, merino wool. So I'm just gonna check. Yeah, I have a couple minutes left before it's gonna turn off. So this uh, scarf pattern I made and uh, had as a part in my autumn box and also you got two colors of my sereno in the box so you could knit this scarf with the yarn from the box and actually the amount of yarn in the box um, would be enough to knit both the big size scarf and the small size scarf and yeah Link in the description for the pattern, for those who want it. And then now we're gonna take the last finished uh, project. And I'm also gonna tell you who uh, won the giveaway. And the last finished project, and <laughs> now they are a bit... Uh, I have worn these a couple of times since they were done. But it's my uh, uh, October sock. And it's got the name Disa, so Disa sock, and yeah, the winner of the giveaway will get this pattern, and also I'm gonna dye two skeins of yarn in my alpaca sock, um, or if you prefer, the winner prefer to check my web page and choose two colors, or otherwise I'm gonna dye two colors. And I'm really pleased with these, and it's it's like one once again. I'm so uh, grateful for my test knitters because I have had a couple of test knitters for these socks, and it's so nice to see the different um, expression on the pattern when you use different color. Like I have this really like for me autumn uh, damped color that like totally <laughs> is my style. But then you have, uh, when, when the test knitter made them, I will remember that one had like a black and a yellow color together. And like, that's not really my style, but it looked so nice with this pattern, like, like one by one uh, color work. And yeah, so uh, these, this pattern you can also find on my Ravelry link in the description and 
Yeah, uh, and now I'm gonna tell you the winner for this pattern and two skeins of yarn. And I'm gonna read what the winner wrote in the comment. I'm just gonna find it. So the winner wrote, Happy birthday, Panilla. How great is that that you have a new beginning? Hope that it brings many and more viewers to you. I actually cased on, oh sorry, cased, casted on first on my autumn plants today. It's a micelle sweater in black drop stacy. I will turn it to a type of dress. My other plans are to knit an Oslo hat to my friend in Finkolana Alva and a pair of ribbed socks in Viking Garn uh, Alpaca Liten Storm uh, for myself. Yes, we like alpaca here too. And actually it's really funny or quite nice because the winner is Dima and I met Dima when I was in uh, Soleftio. So congratulations Dima. Uh, you can write to me uh, either on my email or on Instagram and I will send you this sock pattern and I will send you two skates of yarn. Either if you choose some from my webpage or if you choose uh, a color of your own choice. Congratulations! And actually I'm going to talk a bit about Soleftio. So, uh, yeah, Dima was there at the same event as me. Go Soleftio with uh, Kalle Flodin, who is a Swedish YouTuber. And uh, oh, this is a hard word, but the uh, municipality of Celestio. Um, sorry if I said that wrong. It's a really, really hard word, I would say. But yeah, he had together with Celestio municipality uh, an event where they want people from all around the world to come to Celestio and be able to try out uh, what you can do in Celestio because the municip oh, okay. I'm gonna shade it to say commune, because that's what we say in Swedish. So, uh, Soleftio commune want to uh, have people move to Soleftio. Uh, they have to grow their population. And uh, I think this is a really funny way. And I can wait. So, yeah, I saw I had only five seconds left on my recording because my camera only records 30 minutes at a time. So I saw it like, oh my god, only five seconds left, so I had to like cut it. And yeah, but I think it's a really like, like, oh, funny or like, it's a great idea to use an influencer that lives in your commune uh, to bring people, like to attract people to that place and have the influencer to show around I, I think that's quite unique here in Sweden, like, at least, that uh, the commune use uh, an influencer from their town um, to like marketing their commune. So uh, I think this was the third event Kalle Flodin had together with Soleftio Commune, uh, Go Soleftio. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm also going to link in the description his video from this event and I'm also going to link another guy's oh this oh yeah another <laughs> of the participants video his name is Guy and I think he was at the first event and now have have moved to Soleftio so I know at least that Kelly has a video and Guy has a video and I'm gonna link them down here for those who want to look at what happened on this Go Soleftio event and I actually has recorded some uh, stuff also from the event and when I feel like I have the time and energy I'm gonna put together a video from my point of view of the event but it was a really really nice event and I met so much nice people and we like it's amazing how much you can learn from a stranger in four days like how you can feel like they really become your friends and uh, the people on this event was from all around the world we have some from australia and from the united states and we have i picked up a girl um 
in Stockholm on my way up because I took my car up to Slepia and I think it was like about a 10 hour car ride. So when I come to Stockholm I picked up a girl from uh, uh, England and uh, we had like five hours together in the car and it was so like a nice time. It was so easy to talk. I was a bit nervous because I didn't know who she was and uh, we have only like wrote a few rows to each other uh, on messenger like I can pick people up on the airport and she like I need a ride and like yeah you can go with me and then like just check out what where should I pick her up and stuff like that but we had a really really uh, nice time together in the car and uh, yeah and we have a lot of people from like Germany and the Netherlands and yeah it, it was really nice um, and I actually got to see the northern lights like really see the northern lights so it was also a great experience like I live in Sweden but I live so far south that yeah we have had really much northern lights the past like two years but living so far down south as I did the times I went out to look at the northern light you haven't been able to see it with your eyes but you could take picture with your phone but this time you could really see it and I now really know what they mean when like seeing it dancing but it wasn't a screen uh, at all that it looked at pictures it was more like um, white with a little hint of green um, but yeah it was a really nice experience um, and yeah uh, I gonna show you because we have some different uh, activities we could do. We went hiking uh, two times and at the hotel we lived they have a spa um, section so I spent a lot of time in the spa and uh, they had like a Swedish course that you can go to and for obvious reason I didn't want to go to the Swedish course so I went to Jonna Jinto's store or not the store because it haven't opened yet but we had uh, the opportunity to go and look at the office and talk to the staff John and Jinton was not there they were very uh, clear about that we were not uh, to meet John and Jinton but we can go check her like the office part of her upcoming store and I was not expecting that we would be able to buy some jewelry when we were there um, but we could so actually my necklace I have I'm gonna Close up. Uh, so this necklace I bought from the Jana Jinton store and I it's a new um, design that is um, I don't know when they're gonna re re release this design but I tried on a couple of necklaces and this was the last one I tried on and I was like okay I'm not taking it off I'm, I'm gonna just pay for it and keep it here um, so that was a nice surprise because I mean I could buy from her web page but it's always much nicer to come to a store so they have like uh, a little display of some of the jewelry and yeah when I put together my uh, video from this event I'm also gonna show uh, I actually was allowed to record from uh, within the office so yeah uh, we have the opportunity for that but then also uh, me and Dima, the one that won the giveaway, we went and uh, yeah, we was to look if the second hand store was open, but it was not. So the other day I went with the girl that I picked up uh, in Stockholm and she and I went to some second hand stores and I always look for some nice fabrics uh, when I'm at second hand stores because I sew my project bags and my bags with uh, second hand fabric. So I'm going to show you the fabric I bought when I was in Celestio. So this is uh, a flowery one and I don't know if this is like um, that you put on the table. I know the word in Swedish but yeah but like put on the table. Yeah you understand what I mean. So two pieces with this nice flowery fabric and then I found a curtain 
when the oh I have to turn off the vibration from my phone because now they are typing in a group chat. Uh, so this is a curtain and I, I don't really like this like lined part here, but I like these big flowers in the middle. Oh maybe it's upside down. No, it was on the right way. But it's uh, twice as long because it's folded now and I got two pieces of this as well. So here is the other piece and then I found another that you put on the table <laughs> and like really like this 70s um, for me this is 70s and I love this kind of pattern and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to uh, sew something of it or if I'm actually gonna use it um, to put on the table or maybe if I sew a pillowcase of it so I can have it on display I don't I don't really like to like cut in it I want the whole picture uh, since it's such a small piece and I got two of this one as well uh, or maybe this this is a bit bigger right I have to compare yeah, okay this one was a little bit bigger but I love these colors and I love this pattern so I actually was um, on a looked at the house with a friend the other day and um, it was a house from the 50s and they have the, clearly changed the um, do you say tapestry ah, on the wall uh, to patterns from the 70s and I loved it I'm gonna see if I can put up a picture here from the kitchen in that house and I so so loved uh, the pattern uh, they had on the walls in the kitchen. I gotta put it here. And then I found a pillowcase. I have a thing for when I found find um, fabric with birds on. So you see they are like oh, down here you have like a bird. Um, I, I really like often found uh, fabrics with birds on that, that I think are really nice. And then, yeah, one more. Okay, no, it was on the right. Uh, one more with birds. And this, these are pillowcases. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's hard when you find um, a fabric that have too big of a pattern that's going to be too big to put on one of my bags or um, project bags. Like, for example, this one. Um, or maybe this one I would probably would be able to make a bag or a project bag with, but it's on the edge to be too big, uh, too big of a pattern on it. So I have actually started to think if I not only gonna do project bags and bags, but actually gonna start to make some pillowcases. Um, but yeah, oh, here are more birds. And this is um, curtains and I have two pieces of this as well and like this one here you have uh, a pattern that uh, maybe on a bag you could get the whole bird but otherwise not not a, a small project bag um, but yeah as I said I have some sort of love to finding um, fabric with birds on so these pieces I found when I was in Soleftio and I have some secondhand stores uh, around where I live that I often check for fabrics and it's nice to go to another town and uh, find, uh, like sh look for fabrics in others, other stores because the stores I usually go to it feels like oh they still have this uh, curtain left or I have seen this pattern before and then it's like you don't look as closely at the fabrics because so much uh, like you have seen it before so it's really nice to go to another place and to another second hand store and find some fabric you definitely haven't seen before 
but I have two pieces of fabric I found this weekend when I was at my local secondhand store. <laughs> and yeah, uh, as I said, birds. This was also with birds on. And it's a big piece of, oh, here it was a needle. I have to remember to remove that later so I don't uh, stuck on it. Ow! And that's precisely what I did. Okay, I'm gonna remove it right away. Ow! So I'm just gonna go wash my finger because it starts to come out. And the second fabric I found this weekend was like with big leaves and flowers. And I really, really love the colors in this fabric. So yeah, now, now I kind of have to set a stop for myself. Like no more buying fabrics until you have made something of the fabric you have. But it's hard when you find a fabric and like, that's also the fun with buying fabric at a secondhand store because often it's just only that piece that they have and you won't be able to find it anywhere else. Um, and then it's hard to like not buying when you find it. And yeah. Um, oh yeah, I actually have um, my only work in progress at the moment is, oh, I, as I said before, I was to take it slow with making new designs, but apparently that's hard for me because uh, here I have the beginning of a new design and it's just the neckline for a sweater. And I think I'm just gonna show you this and I can show you the color combination like this darker brown with this really, really light brown beige color. So these two together gonna make for a new sweater and how that's evolving um, you're gonna have to keep watching this episode to know how this will end up looking and that was all I had to show today and I actually have managed to I'm gonna check okay it's 45 minutes I said to myself I'm gonna try to keep it for a a maximum of 30 to 40 minutes because I have so much other to do but yeah and I have started school uh, since my first episode and it takes so much time but it's so so fun and uh, yeah you have probably seen that I have uploaded some shorter videos from what I'm painting and if you follow me on Instagram Milas Kreativa uh, I'm uploading some of my uh, what I'm painting in school um, so yeah, now I'm done with um, this like big project we've been working for in three weeks now. And it's like uh, big and small. So we had to make a painting that was a minimum of, I think they said, it depended on how big uh, a piece of wood you could put up your canvas on because uh, everyone couldn't put it up on the wall. Um, so around 90 to 100 centimeters uh, and then bigger to the other side. So I think mine is maybe 90 by 135 centimeters is my big one. And then you have to do a small one that like they, they belong together, the big one and the small one. And the small one uh, are not gonna be bigger than the size of uh, A5. And that's like, uh, is it 15 by, yeah, 50 by 21. No bigger than that. Uh, you can do it smaller, but not bigger than 15 by 21 centimeters. So that's, uh, yeah, the big one and the small one as, as well. I'm done with. And I'm probably gonna put up a video, hopefully today, if I have the time, uh, both on in the Instagram and here on YouTube um, from my, big painting and I'm so pleased with it and yeah and next week we are going to Copenhagen um, for a school trip and yeah I will see if I <laughs> for the next episode will remember what we did in Copenhagen but uh, I'm looking forward to go on this trip we're gonna go to some museums and uh, uh, one of the evenings at least 
some of us gonna go to Tivoli and it's really nice this time of year when they have like Halloween decorated pumpkins and uh, lights in the trees. Oh, it's so cozy. So I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, I think this for will be everything for this time and uh, the next episode. M maybe, maybe, I can promise, but maybe I'll find the time to make another episode when we have our fall break or autumn break. Um, maybe, but I have so much work to do to prepare for all the Christmas uh, market, um, market, Christmas market event. Um, but I hope I will be able to record at least one more episode this year. And yeah, until next time. Um, yeah, what do you say in English? How do I say it in Swedish? I, I'm just gonna end up, have a nice time and see you.